Hello and welcome to our letter of the day video. Today's letter is the letter I. I looks like this, uppercase and lowercase. Now let's do the sign language for I, okay? You just put your pinky up like that. That's the sign language for letter I. Let's go back and see if we remember all the letters, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. That's today's letter I. Well, let's decorate the letter I together. For letter I, I'm going to put on some itchy dots. I have some dot stickers. But if you don't have these kind of stickers, don't worry. You can just take your finger and a little bit of paint and dot on some itchy dots, or you can use a Q-tip. Okay, so I'm just decorating my eye with lots and lots of itchy dots. Maybe just a few more. There we go. All right, so there's what the letter I looks like. And now let's see if we can practice writing the letter I. The uppercase letter I looks like a number one. And then it has a top and a bottom. Let me show you. Number one. And then give it a top and a bottom. That's the uppercase I. Let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to make a number one all the way down to the green carpet. We're going to trace across the top and the bottom. One with a top and a bottom. There's the one with a top and a bottom. This is the uppercase letter I. Okay, now let's look at the lowercase letter I, okay? So for lowercase I, you just make a number one with an itchy dot. Now make sure your itchy dot doesn't get connected with the number one like this. You wanna toss that itchy dot into the sky, kind of like a ball. So one with an itchy dot. Sometimes I go outside and I get bit by a mosquito and it's really, really itchy. Does that ever happen to you? Sometimes you go out and you get a mosquito bite and it's so itchy, it makes an itchy dot. That's what this looks like. I has an itchy dot too. So make sure you don't forget that itchy dot at the top of I. Let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. You're gonna make the number one downstairs. And then you're gonna make that itchy dot part upstairs. Just toss it upstairs like a ball. So number one with an itchy dot. Number one with an itchy dot. Number one with an itchy dot. So this is the lowercase letter I. Well, letter I is one of those five special letters known as the vowels. Do you remember what the vowels are? The vowels are A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels. Did you hear me say I? I is a vowel. So we blend with that every day. So we're not gonna blend today. Instead, we're going to play a game and you're gonna put itchy dots on me. I is usually in the middle in the words that we read every day. And so I'm gonna read some words to you and you have to decide if I, eh, 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 like an itchy dot is in the middle of the word. And if it is, thumbs up. But if it isn't, thumbs down. And if you get it right, you get to put an itchy dot on me. So one more time, the letter I makes this sound, eh, 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 like an itchy dot. Can you make that sound before we get started? Eh, 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 like an 
itchy dot. So that's the sound you're listening for, I in the middle. The first word is bin, b in, bin. Thumbs up, I hear an I in the middle of bin. So I get an itchy dot, good job. The next one is sit, sit, sit. Thumbs up, sit has an I, so I get another itchy dot. Oh, how about this one? Cat, cat, cat. No, thumbs down. Cat has I like at you. That's the letter A, so you got that right. So that means I need another itchy dot. Oh, right there. How about this one? Him, him. Thumbs up, that has it in the middle. Oh, another itchy dot. I'm getting pretty itchy. How about this next one? Top, top. Mm, thumbs down, that has ah, which is letter O. Let's put another itchy dot right here. Okay, how about this next one? Sip, sip. Mm hmm thumbs up. That one has an itchy dot, an I, so let's put that right there. Oh, I'm getting so itchy. How about this one? This one's tricky, so listen carefully. Hen, hen, eh, eh, hen. Thumbs down, that's actually letter E. That one was tricky because E and I sound a lot alike. Oh, another itchy dot. How about this word? Pup, pup, pup. That's letter U, very good. Not letter I and you got it right. So I'm gonna put an itchy dot right there on my nose. One more, how about bit, bit. Thumbs up, that one has, <gasps> very good, a letter I in the middle, B it and I'm gonna put this one right here on my chin. Well, I am pretty itchy after all those itchy dots. I have an itchy face, but it's a happy itchy face because you did a great job with that game. Okay, now I wanna teach you a new sight word today. And the new sight word is this one right here, an, an. I don't know why it's called a sight word. It's very easy to sound out. An, an. When a word begins with a vowel, we can't use a uh in front of it. We have to use an. So in our sight word reader, you're going to see an instead of a uh today. Let's see if we can, we can remember the other words we've been working on. It is an. One more time. It is an. It is an. Now, everything that you're going to see in the reader starts with letter I. So let's read this together. Okay, so put your finger right here on this dot. And every time you say a word, move your finger, okay? It is. An iguana. It is an iguana. Let's try this one down here. It is an ice cream. An ice cream with sprinkles on top and a cherry. Let's do the last one, okay? It is an Igloo. It is an igloo. Well, you did a really great, great job reading that sight word reader. Now let's do some math together, okay? For math, we're going to be catching some bugs and putting them in a jar, and we're going to count and see how many bugs that we get, okay? So this is called Bugs in a Jar Math, and I'll put the link below so you can get this printable too. All right, so 
Let's see if we can start by catching two purple bugs. And then let's get three yellow bugs. All right now I'm gonna show you something right here. It looks like the letter T, but it's actually a plus sign. And this plus sign means add all together. So how many bugs are there all together? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five bugs all together. Two purple plus three yellow equals five. Okay, let's see if we can capture some different bugs this time, okay? This time, we are going to capture one green bug. And let's see if we can get five of these red bugs. All right, I'm going to make this that looks like a T. It's a plus, plus sign. And that means add all together. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one green bug plus five red bugs equals six bugs all together. All right, let's see if we can catch some different bugs this time. We'll let all these go. All right, this time I want to catch four blue bugs. And let's catch three of the yellow bugs. Got them. Okay, so I'm going to put this sign. It looks like a T, but it's a plus sign, and it means add them all together. Here we go. One, two, three, four five, six, seven. So four plus three equals seven. Did you know that you can add more than just two numbers? So this time, let's add two purple bugs into our jar. Let's catch one green bug and let's get all four of those blue bugs back in the jar. All right now, let's add them all together. There's the plus sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two purple plus one green plus four blue equals seven all together. Okay, so that was our math practice. For shape practice, we're gonna be looking at bugs again. And these bugs are super cute and colorful, but they're also in different shapes, just like real bugs. God made real bugs in different shapes and colors and styles. Well, let's draw a line if we can from the picture to the shape that matches it. Now let's see if we can name the shape. This is a circle, a circle. Let's look at the bug right next to it. Let's draw a line to match the shape. And what shape is this? It's a diamond, diamond. Let's look at this bug. What shape is it? It's a heart. It looks kind of like an upside down heart, doesn't it? The next one is kind of tricky. It has six sides. Do you remember what shape has six sides? It's a hexagon. Can you say hexagon? Nice job. Let's do the next page, okay? Ooh, this is another tricky bug. This one has eight sides. Like, an, like the eight legs on an octopus. Do you remember what the name of this shape is? It's an octagon, octagon. The next one kind of looks like a snail. What shape is it? Oval, an oval is kind of like a circle, but it's kind of squished. The next shape has five sides. What shape has five sides? That's a pentagon, pentagon. This pretty rainbow bug has four sides, two sides short and two sides long. What shape is it? Rectangle, rectangle. Let's do the last page. This pretty purple bug is a square, a square. He kind of looks angry, doesn't he? Let's move on to the next bug. What shape is this next bug? It's a star, good job. The next one's a little tricky. It kind of looks like a triangle, but it's a triangle that's lost its top. Do you remember what that one's called? That's a trapezoid. Poor, poor trapezoid has no top. 
He used to be a triangle, but now he's not. Let's do the last one. This looks like a bumblebee. What shape is it? That's a triangle with three sides. Well, you did a great job reviewing all those shapes. Now we're going to do some art together. Let's make some bugs. I'll see you at the art table. For art today, we're going to be making some insects and we're going to be using rocks. If you wanna make some too, you just need to go outside and find some rocks that are flat on one side. Okay, I already made some. There's a blue one and this one looks like a ladybug. There's one that's pink and blue, but I thought we would make this one green. So I'm just using a Q-tip to paint my rock, but you can use a paintbrush or even your fingers. Okay, next I'm going to add on some wiggle eyes. And you can decorate yours however you'd like to. If you don't have wiggle eyes, maybe you'd like to just paint on some eyes. Okay, so there's another insect for our collection. Now I'm going to come back over and we'll do some science together. For science today, I'm going to introduce you to a new class pet, or should I say pets. Today we've been talking about icky insects and guess what? We have some to add to our class. These aren't very icky though. This is an ant farm and I got this at Hobby Lobby and there are five new friends in the ant farm. If you look really closely, you might get a, a glimpse of some. They've been working really hard today. I'll turn it on this side. I think you can see the tunnels a little better. They've been working hard to make some tunnels and there's some over here and even over here. So they've been going up to this piece of bread that I put right here on the top and getting bits of it and then taking it to their storeroom, which I think must be over here. An ant farm is a great way to study the creatures that God made. These are pretty, pretty cool. Let's take another look and see if we can see some. There's one at the top. Hope you can see him. Let me turn it around. He went behind. There we go. Do you see him right there? I think he's getting a snack. So this will be a lot of fun. There's another friend coming over right there. This was about $10 at Hobby Lobby. So what a great way to learn about ants by observing them. This cotton right here has some water. You just put kind of water down in there and there's like I say, a little piece of bread that they've been working on. Okay, well that is our new class pets. These are our new class pets and we're going to add them right here on the shelf beside Fred. And we'll observe and take a look and watch as they tunnel. All right, so next I do have one other science experiment for us to do. We're going to make some raisins dance. Raisins kind of look like ants. They're small and round. And we're going to see if we can make them dance inside this glass. So I'm going to just be adding some soda, 7-Up or Sprite, or even soda water works just fine. And then I'm going to drop in the raisin. At first, the raisin is heavier than the soda and so it goes to the bottom but look what happens lots of bubbles form on the raisin and makes the raisin float to the top but when the pop, when the bubbles pop it falls back when enough of the bubbles pop it falls back to the bottom when more bubbles form it can float back up to the top this is called buoyancy i'll add in a few more raisins and let's see if they'll dance so one more time when the raisins are heavy, heavier than the soda, they fall right to the bottom. But when the bubbles attach to them, it causes them to be lighter than the soda. So they float up to the top. When the bubbles pop, then they fall back to the ground and it starts all over again. It looks like dancing raisins or actually maybe dancing insects because the raisins kind of look like ants. This is buoyancy when things are float up to the top we say they're buoyant. Okay, there goes another one. Pop and back down. Oh, and back up again. 
This is the fun project. Well, now you can watch the raisins dance if you like to while I get ready to do our story time together. For story time, we're going to be reading about some insects. It's called icky bugs. And this story is by Jerry Palata and Ralph Massiello. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book. A is for ants, like our ants. Ants are hard workers. Ants are able to carry things that are larger and heavier than they are. They always seem to be trying to build something. B is for bumblebee. Because the bumblebee is furry, it's able to stay outside in cooler weather. Bumblebees fly from flower to flower collecting nectar to make honey. C is for cricket. The cricket likes to hide under things. It makes noise by rubbing its wings together. Isn't it fun to listen to lots of crickets at night? D is for dragonfly. The dragonfly has four wings. When dragonflies stop flying and take a rest, they're unable to fold their wings back. So they just rest with their wings sticking out. E is for earwig. No one seems to know how the earwig got its name, but it has a pincher at the tail end of its body. F is for firefly. Fireflies shine like light bulbs in the dark. When they light up, they can find each other more easily. Fireflies are easy to catch because they fly so slowly. G is for grasshopper. Grasshoppers can jump really well. If you try to catch one, it will usually jump away just as you're about to touch it. H is for horsefly. The green-headed horsefly has pretty green eyes, but it has a terrible bite. If one of them lands on you, be careful. Shoo it away. I is for io moth. The io moth has two spots on its lower wings that look like eyeballs. When birds go near these moths and see the spots, they think they're big eyes staring at them and they get scared and fly away. J is for Japanese beetle. These beetles love to eat flowers. Sometimes they eat so much that they cause lots of damage to plants. K is for catadid. Catadids like crickets make noise by rubbing their wings together. The noise they make sounds like their name. Catadid, catadid, catadid. L is for ladybug. This insect is really called a ladybug beetle. They're so round, it's hard to believe that they can fly, but they can. M is for monarch. The monarch butterfly is known for migrating. It flies from the northern United States all the way down to Mexico. Birds know that monarchs taste awful, so they never go near them. N is for noceums. Noceums is a word for tiny insects that are almost impossible to see. They're really little tiny flies. They can make people miserable because when they bite, they really give you itchy dots. O is for an orb weaver. Spiders that make round, circle-shaped webs are called orb weavers. Many people are frightened by spiders, but most of them will not hurt you. P is for praying mantis. It's called a praying mantis because it looks like it's kneeling and praying. Gardeners and farmers like them because they eat pesky bugs that are harmful to vegetables and other plants. Q is for queen bee. In a beehive, there's only one queen bee. She can lay thousands of eggs per day. All of the other bees in the hive take good care of the queen bee. R is for the red admiral. This butterfly is not bright red like an apple or a cherry. It's really a rusty orange color. Red admirals are very difficult to catch because they fly fast and they go all over, zigzag, zigzag. S is for scorpion. A scorpion is really scary looking. They have two front pinchers just like lobsters. At the end of their tails, they have stingers. Would you like to be stung by a scorpion? Uh-uh, let's get out of here. T is for tarantula. The tarantula is a big furry spider. It can grow to be as large as your hand. Tarantulas and scorpions are found in warm climates. U is for unicorn beetle. The unicorn beetle has a single horn sticking out of its head. V is for velvet mite. These creatures are red and so small that you can hardly see them. About 30 of them could fit on the fingernail of your thumb. W is for water spider. This spider makes its home underwater. It weaves a special web which allows it to bring air under the water. It catches and eats things that swim or float nearby. 
X is for the marking on the back of this bug. This bug doesn't start with X, but it does have an X on its back. It's actually called a cotton stainer. Y is for yellow paint bug. This bug is very easy to see because it has a bright red color, a bright yellow color. It has six legs, just like all other insects. And Z is for zillions and zillions of zebra butterflies. Zillions of them all flying at once would be a beautiful sight to see. The end. Well, God made lots of interesting insects, didn't he? And I had fun talking about them. I'll see you next time for our letter of the day. Goodbye.